Pause. I didn't come here with water. Uh, this is yours? Yeah. <laughs> you drink it? Wow, I'm high. <laughs> So we have Mark Bravo, the famous Mark Bravo, and so today I just want to ask you some questions. You know, Sounds if you get too uncomfortable, let me know. I will back up. Um, too uncomfortable for me. <laughs> so first, we're gonna start with your album. Now, you just dropped an album, an amazing album, by the way. I love the cover art. Um, what gave you that idea? Well, the cover art, I just wanted to kind of like basically show that I'm on top of the world in a sense and my own gift and my own uniqueness because everyone has their own talents that sets them apart from everyone else so I feel like that's what I wanted to you okay. know, portray in that and you're on top of the world literally exactly. so I love yeah. it um also you have a song like God check it out it's really nice that's one of my favorites by the way um and in the song you said some things that actually like just kind of caught my ear uh -huh. um you were like um when it gets dark, I'm gonna put light like that. Like in right. your life, when it gets dark, you're gonna exactly. bring light like God. Right. And I was thinking, and then you also mentioned that when you go to the mall, whenever you go out with your, your niggas, quote unquote, mm -hmm. um, or with your friends or whatever, you feel as though you have to check your status of your account before you make any type of purchase. Right. And I was like, damn, he's kind of saying like, you don't, you don't have it like that. Right. Which is so different because other rappers tend to, even before they get famous or before they get money, they're like, I got it like that. So I'm right. like, he's choosing a different route here. You're being very yeah. genuine with your fans. You know, I ain't broke, you know. But <laughs> at the same time, I probably have more money than a lot of, you know, other rappers who yeah. are out there flexing. Like, yeah. I, I just know I don't have enough to compete in the world yet. Mm. So I don't feel like it's anything, you know. I have to still, like I said, check my account for certain things because I'm not there yet, but I'm on my way for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. I was like, this is very genuine. It's very, you're being very transparent with your fans. I really like right. that. It's really different. It's really mm -hmm. dope. Um, one thing that I really like about you in general as an artist, I feel like your voice is so smooth or soothing. It's like, <laughs> I was with my cousin, you know, we were listening to your album because I was making her check you out. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you know, I feel very high. <laughs> Funny. Is that yeah. your your process? I mean, you it's like it, it is, but you know, like people either love or hate my voice, right. and I compare myself to like someone like Q Tip. Mm. His voice is he uses it as an instrument because it's weird, but he uses it as an instrument. So yeah, I too. consider yeah, so I consider my voice as an instrument to maybe set like a soothing mood. Right? right. It, yeah, it does very feel very wavy. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. like that. I absolutely like that. I feel like you're on yeah, you're in your own creative lane. Yeah, I don't think so far in the DMV at least I haven't heard an artist like you. So you like you're starting that. your own your own lane. That's yeah. really dope. And I also have to ask. Did you have any features on this album? <laughs> Why, yes, I did. You might know her, actually. Oh. Her name is uh, Chelsea K. Wow, she sounds good. I love that yeah. name. <laughs> I, um, I, I forgot how we met, but I know, I think I asked you to send me like a little snippet mm. of you singing. Yeah. And from there, I was like, okay, I could work with this. And just the song, the vibrations of the song, Let's Do Lunch. Mm. I was like, okay, this will go well that with her voice as long as it's done correctly. Yeah. Like, and you did your thing, for sure. Everybody loved it. One of my favorites by far, Features. It's, very, it's really easy to work with you in the studio, by the way. Like, it's you. very, like, fast, fast, you know, no, nothing. It's really easy. Yeah, I try um, to lay it out. Like, I try to map out every different part of it before mm. it happens, so... Mm. I would just like how I would if somebody was to do something for me. Right. Kind of do it like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. and you're very understanding because I'd be having to take like two, three <laughs> okay. retakes. One thing I was going to ask about Let's Do Lunch. Um, I was watching the video, right? Mm -hmm. What gave you that idea? Why did you have that vision? I mean, apart from it being lunch. <laughs> um, Let's Do Lunch was about basically how you're, you're never too late um, to make a change for real. like mm -hmm. a lot of people were saying in, in my life that I wasn't spending enough time with them and I'm too busy and things mm -hmm. like that so I'm just like you know boom let's do something this day wow like, let's, let's do lunch right exactly that's crazy. And, it's like, and it's lunch because there's breakfast it's like you're never too early you're never too late it's right, right on time as long as you decide to 
you know, yeah. do what you need to do. That's one thing I like about your music. I feel like I have to think. Because if I just listen to the words, I'm going to be very confused. Uh-huh. But if I, like, put them together, I'm like, okay, okay, it's right. very... Yeah, well, they, will, they love it, but they don't like it. But they love it because <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's art. But they know a lot of, like, your generic fans. Right. They won't really tap into it too much unless they, you know, get a really understanding of mm-hmm. it. But it's okay, you know. Still never be you, too late man. to be a fan for me. Period. <laughs> so, I was going to ask, what is your beat selection process like? Hmm. It's sometimes, like, okay, I'll give you an example. Two days ago, I wrote a verse. And I wrote it to a beat. But then after I wrote the verse and I was rapping to the beat, I'm like, I don't, this verse is too good for this beat now. Mm. I don't really like the beat anymore. So I was looking for another beat and it's been two days and I still haven't found one. And wow. I've been listening to beats for the last two days. And so it's just like, I just won't stop until I find the exact vibe that I fit. It's like, boom, like this is it right here. Mm. Now I know most artists tend to have different process when they write. Mm-hmm. Do you usually find the beat then write or do you write before you find the beat i usually find the beat sometimes if i'm just out at work or if i'm doing things throughout the day i'm definitely gonna write if i just have an idea but um i definitely i get my beats from shout out to my producers tape hook parker jazz kyle carter um who else um icy twat and whoever oh jay davis you know whoever else (laughs) i'm forgetting though like i appreciate y'all because they really help me make my own sound so wow Okay, so what is your writing process like? Now, I, as an artist, I write when I feel like it. Like, I write when I feel something, when I feel an emotion. Are you the same? Um, I can, I feel like I have to always feel it because it's not like, let's say you work at any job and you wake up like, yeah, I don't feel it today, so I'm not going to go to work. It's like you, you, you have to, even if you don't have a good day at work, after those couple bad days, you're going to end up having a good day. But if you stop going you kind of you you mess up the potential rhythm you could get in right. by not going you know mm-hmm. so it's like you can you have i have to record even if i don't feel like i'm in the mood i just i, I have to write i have to do something you know? which is so funny cuz i remember this um this clip of little wayne in the studio and mm-hmm. he's like he was talking to somebody i don't know he was trying to like mentor somebody. He was like, "Don't be like these little singers, only singing when when they feel um, emotional." Right. I was like, "Wow, exactly. that's me." Right. But um, Lil Wayne has some horrible songs, but he still <laughs> he recorded them and he put them out. <laughs> you know? Right now, let the Lil Wayne fans hear that. Cause... I mean, yeah, <laughs> that ain't nobody perfect. He's still one of my favorite rappers. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> I was gonna ask. Mm-hmm. So. Do you have a certain, do you feature with anybody or is it those like, what is the requirements to get a feature like, or to have a feature on your album? Um, you're saying like for, what's the process of me getting someone to do a song with me? Yeah, like, is it, I know some people are like really selective, like I can't work oh, with this yeah. person, I, I can't mean, work with that, like how? I'm not even really selective. I think once I have a bigger pool of artists to pick from, that's when I really will like do features, but my features are gonna be different. Mm. Like I'm gonna feature, I don't even want to say it because I want people to take my ideas, but I'm gonna feature people that you wouldn't think of that are just so such easy access for right. them that people, they'll just, you know, no disrespect to Meek Mill, but they'll go get a Meek Mill feature when you could pay that money to do a feature with somebody like, you know, like a Sade or like right. a Missy Elliott or something that'll right. really like, that'll be dope and something that people remember and they'll stick. But that's what people will remember me for, that's what people remember me for, and I want them to remember me you right. know, for that, is to right. do like features that are outside of the box. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny, Issa Rae said something like that. She said when she was um, coming up as a producer or whatever, she can, she's an actress and producer and a writer and all that, she does everything. But she was saying that... Um, she was saying that usually she works with people who are upcoming with her, and right. people tend to go for working with, trying to work with the highest people, but really you should be working with the people that are like mm-hmm. closer to you so that you can all elevate together. So that's a really good mindset to have. But I was also going to ask, you know, I've seen this, this thing that said that as an artist or as anyone trying to turn a passion into a career, you should clock in two hours a day. Mm-hmm. How much do you clock in a day? I clock in at least five hours a day. Wow. But it's spread out. So it'll be like 20 minutes here, maybe 30 minutes mm. here. But it's actually really smart. Right. Yeah. Really so smart. even when I'm at work and stuff, I'm always doing something at some point, like yeah. posting something. Or, and then I set up photo shoots. I have to at least do one or two photo shoots a week 
and that's why I'm kind of always posting photos and wow. I have like a it's a schedule it's like a freelance type of schedule but I just know I have to get certain things done by a certain date yeah. okay so apart from being the greatest artist in the DMV <laughs> You are also known for the dreads, mm -hmm. the dreads and the beards. Like, mm -hmm. if I see dreads and a beard, I'm like, that's Bravo, mm -hmm. instantly. So I was going to ask, how long have you been growing your dreads? Eight years. Eight years. Yep. Wow. And they were about this long, like three years ago, and I cut them up to here. Wow. And they've grown back, and it's the longest they've ever been, actually, you know. But are you going to cut them again? Probably when they get too heavy. Mm -hmm. Oh, but so they get heavy. They're a little lighter now, but yeah, they do get wow, heavy. Wow, I never sure. even knew that. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. So what made you decide, like, I want dreads? How old were you when you even made this this big decision? Probably six. I was 16. I, I had a high top fade like this. Like wow. I, I always had, like, different hairstyles growing up. I can't even see up. you with that. Yeah. You still have I a beard? Had, no, I didn't have a beard. Yeah, I was in middle school. Yeah, and before that, I was in middle school. Then went to high school, and I had a fade. It was like this, so. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I always had, like, different ways to stand out. I always yeah. feel like that's at least the first thing you can do is make people go and like <laughs> see into it. Right. Mm -hmm. When I see the beard, I'm like, mm -hmm. Bravo with the beard and the dreads. I okay. used to have the tongue ring too, freshman year. And I used Are you to serious? Have like, yeah, and everybody used to be like, I was nothing to do with the dreads and the tongue ring. I used to look freak. <laughs> <laughs> but we go. <laughs> so, what is your hair care routine? Um. I wash my hair probably about only like twice a month, but I have like a really strong shampoo so mm -hmm. that it lasts me throughout the month. And I get my hair done probably like once every one or two months. Mango twist? Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm. And you said the mango twist? Yes. Yeah, I actually don't like the mango twist you like don't? that. Yeah, I heard wow. it. That's a lot of like extra the white stuff. stuff. In your hair. Yeah. yeah. I think it's about how excessively, like how much yeah, you put you into it. Yeah, if you mix it, yeah, it'll, it'll work if yeah. you mix it, yeah. Okay, well, do you ever plan on shaving them or cutting them off? No, nah, I don't plan on it, but I'm not opposed to it, if it makes sense for me. What if the, what if the label like. said you had to? You said, what are the what? What if the label said you had to? Oh, the label said I had to. They can't tell me what, <laughs> what I have to do. In a hypothetical they scenario. Mm. They can only suggest it. Anyone can only suggest anything to you. That's true. Yep. Sure, you have, a, you have a choice in everything you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so if you did have to cut it off, would you would you dread it? Would you comb the dreads out? Or would you just shave it off completely? I would um, let it get like real nappy with a lot of new growth, mm. and try to at least keep like a bush or mm. something that I could do something with. I don't know what I'd do. But you're not feeling the whole bald look, no? It's not for you. <laughs> no, I mean, I probably, I don't know. I probably would get a shape up too. I don't know. It would be between the two. I would at least first cut it though, see what I can do. Or I would try to take it out, actually, and see how long my hair is. Because mm -hmm. I could just be have a lot of hair. That's how I did right before I had dreads. I grew my hair all the way out. Mm -hmm. and then, oh, that's smart. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> so people just try to do it as soon as their hair is short and mm -hmm. go through that little awkward stage. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did have the awkward stage. It wasn't too big, but I definitely had a lot of hair, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as an upcoming artist, mm -hmm. what would you say you have learned or are currently learning like about the music industry or just working your way up there? Um, content and is content's everything, mm -hmm. and it has to be high quality content, mm -hmm. and you have to be consistent. And people have to find something to relate to. Right. That's really all it is. And once you master those three, and you have talent, you kind of un unstoppable, because this profession is like you know how you go to college and. You become, if you want to become a dentist, you have a higher chance if you have that degree. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you have everything that you need in order to, like all the, you know, checkpoints checked off about music, you have probably like a 70% chance to make it right. if you keep doing it. So it's not that far-fetched. Right. It's people just stop because they think it's like impossible. Yeah. Nothing's impossible. Like it's probably hard to... Mm -hmm become the president here like you know <clears throat> president anderson came here you know and she did her thing so fun fact frank ocean says a weekend kalani and more other artists were mm -hmm. literally homeless mm -hmm. while they were trying to make it and even better fact frank ocean was homeless while he was signed to yep. a big label <laughs> exactly it's really all what you do with what you got exactly. everyone can do it that's true. I really believe that. And how would you say that you particularly view the music industry? 
from the outside in? Of course. Um, they're definitely, it's definitely cutthroat if you allow it to be. Mm. But everyone at some point who got messed over got too excited at first. Mm. And they overstood something they didn't understand. Right. But they thought, they assumed everything's going to be okay because this person seems genuine. Right. But it's just like, nah, you got to organically take steps and take time. Even if someone's saying, yeah, this is, you have to do this by today or next week or else it's off the table. Right. Okay. That's wow. fine. Like, if you really want me, if I come to you a day after the day you say I'm cut off, you would still you still going to work with me. So you just saying that so I can hurry up and sign. That's how people are. That's true. Jada Smith actually was saying in an interview that people who are bigger, have more power, will mm-hmm. literally sit in front of you mm-hmm. and try to convince you that you will never have this opportunity again. Right. Opportunity again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you will. Right, and then just things like that people don't pay attention to. It's just like, oh, so, like, without you, I can't do anything. Right. That's why you're trying to get me, so no one else will get me. Exactly. So, it just, it's just backwards, but people gotta listen. Now, would you say that um, God has played, I don't know if you, are you religious? I'm spiritual. Spiritual. But religion is a lot of, like, religion is dope. Mm -hmm. Like, it's amazing because it's, like, what people got from spirituality and created. Do you believe in God? I do believe in God. Okay. And would you say that you feel like he has played any part in your music journey at all? For sure. For sure. He's putting people in my life and giving me the life experience to even have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, without my situation, even, like, just the fact that I have a good household helps me, like, do music with love and do music with patience and time and you can hear different and that's why you kind of say my voice is soothing because of that it's because of because everything is because of God for real so I'm just here doing what I feel like I'm you know what I'm gifted to do okay I love it now as you know a lot of artists complain not just artists but all types of different forms of artists, whether you're a photographer or whatnot, mm-hmm. um, they usually complain about support in the DMV. Mm-hmm. People feel as though the, the DMV don't be supporting like that. How do you feel about that as personally in your music career, your music journey? Have people been I'll supporting? say it's easy to get known in the DMV, mm-hmm. but it's not easy to gain anything from being known in the DMV. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely known in the DMV. Everyone mm-hmm. knows who I am, and they know my brother too, Zachary. Yeah. But it's not doing anything for us. I mean, it's doing stuff for us because I love the fan engagement. Yeah. But you know, it doesn't take you over that hump to get to the next level, and that's why a lot of people have left. A lot of people may, may not verbally agree with that statement, but you know, you can't really show me an artist that like stayed here right. and really got to the point where they got over the hump. Right. Mm-hmm. So would you ever go over the hump? <laughs> you know, so you gotta keep watching. <laughs> oh, okay. Keep, keep us tuned. Keep yeah. us tuned in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what would you say? Who was like your favorite artist right now? Like, hmm. I mean, it's gonna be currency. It's gonna be currency every time. Just like currency, he's the most consistent rapper ever. Mm. And and if anyone wants to debate that, we could, no. yeah, we could definitely well, debate it. He's the most consistent you. rapper ever. Yeah. So, no, nah, because I know a lot of people be like, "What currency?" Like, it's, if you if you're not gonna say either like Rick Ross, Two Chains, or like someone of that caliber, Juicy J, who's been rapping as long as currency has, mm. then you can't even say they're more consistent because they've been rapping as long. Like he drops like five projects a year. What's that thing Juicy J always says in his song? Something, something else. It's like his yeah, um like, his tag. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> that kills me. It's like and it could be slow music, whatever. He just plays it in the back, and it mm-hmm. just absolutely kills me. But I'm gonna jump right into the waters and ask you this: mm-hmm. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes, I do. Ooh, her name ladies. is Kiara Parker. Ooh, period. You gonna have to get her Googled or something? <laughs> you gonna put her government out Kiara there? Parker, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, call her Keys. Keys. Mm-hmm. Your man just put your whole business out there. We'll have you Googled, sis. Hey, that's all they gonna <laughs> do is Google it. Nothing else. Okay, and how long have you and Miss Keys been together? About three years. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's yeah. something serious. How did you guys meet? Um, we met in math class. I actually failed my class. Cause she's like a year or two younger than me. Yeah. 
And I ended up failing my math class by like a point at the 69. And if I had to take it again, I wasn't pressed to fight it because I knew I didn't study for the final. So I just took it again, and she happened to be in my class, sitting behind me the next time. You were meant to fail. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Clearly. And because I failed, I had two access codes. So I was like, you know, does anybody need one? And wow. She was on, so she needed it, wrote her number on my paper, even though she didn't need an access code. Wow. Oh, so she was just going smack. Yep. Sis is smart. Mm-hmm. See is. I like yep. sis. So, yeah, we ended up studying together. And from there, uh, she brought me an umbrella in the library one night because it was raining. It was raining. If anyone who was at UMS like two, three years ago, you know, like it was really bad one night where it was raining like crazy. Oh, yes. and it was like a flood. The floods. Yeah, so crazy. she got stuck in my room for two nights because we couldn't, like, she couldn't go back to her room. Are you serious? And I couldn't drive because, you know, people's cars were getting sucked and everything. Oh my God, I feel like that's like a little fairy tale. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like a very, yeah, she brought me very UMS fairy tale. Like, that's so cute. We got stuck in the room together, girl. You know, that's a good story to tell your friends. Mm-hmm. Like, girl, you know, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. But, um, I'm going to act. I'm just going to get right into it. I'm ready. Are you in an open relationship? <laughs> um, we were in, like, an open relationship. I would say it's still kind of open now because, you know, if there's any women that we, like, along the way and we're both equally attracted to them, then, you know. We have a good night, but besides that, individually, we can't, you know, do our own so, thing anymore. But, I just have to ask. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Mm-hmm. But since we're already jumping in the waters, mm-hmm. we might as well get into it. Um, So, how does it work? So, is it like you... <laughs> I have just curiosity, you know, is it that um, when you pick a woman, because you said that if there's any woman that you were both attracted to, mm-hmm. open relationship is just a sexual past coitus or is it just like you guys are willing to bring this person into a three-way relationship where if they're cool enough like mm. if they were ever like the right fit mm. we would consider it have you ever found the one like the one who's yeah. a, like in the past like who's I mean, cool enough to we actually have someone who's always been potential but you know you never know if that's if that'll happen. Not that we even wanted to, because we're good friends with the person. But you know, you guys are afraid of commitment. Um, nah, <laughs> okay. not even that. You know, like I want to respect her situation because she yeah. has, you know, her own situation yeah. going on and everything. Yeah. But you know, that would only be the only candidate. Not even that we, we've done anything yeah. with the person. But you know, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, when most females, I would have to say, usually when most females get into three-way relationships a lot of people tend to assume or usually is just because they're doing it to please their man i had a friend who did that mm-hmm. very tragic now is that the case you feel is that this is uh she completely comfortable with this area? yeah i mean our thing is more of our threesome is more of me and my girlfriend pleasing the other mm-hmm. woman okay or me and the girl pleasing my girlfriend it's mm-hmm. never like most of the attention towards me it's giving big tiana taylor i love it right yeah <laughs> so you know, and I do. I, I don't. I wouldn't even feel right with like me paying even more attention like to another female, not mm-hmm. to my girlfriend. Like it kind of starts with them, for the most part, or it starts with like me and the other girl. You know, focusing mm-hmm. on my girlfriend. How does you guys? I'm, I'm almost positive that you guys family. You guys know each other's family and friends and mm-hmm. all that. How does the family and friends think of it? Or what do they, they think of it? They actually don't know. They don't know. Oh. Yeah, we feel like that part is our business in terms of when it comes mm-hmm. to family. We don't feel like we, no one else discussed their sexual life. Right. So it's like, why? Because ours is different. Right. We should. I hope grandma it. ain't watching this. I mean, hey, I'm not afraid of my truth <laughs> either. My grandma supports me as long as I'm right. happy, you know? But yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So has you have you guys ever had a case where the girl's like, she either only wants you or only wants her. Like, have you ever felt left out? Or <laughs> no, I mean, I never felt left out because they always usually started, and then I just come in later. But oh, yeah. um, like watching, like creeping, like <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, and it's the right time I get in there. But you know, um, I would say it was a, well, probably like one time where the girl wanted to pay more attention to me than my girl. But you know, we it didn't like hurt us or anything i just mm. kind of moved her off of me mm. <laughs> the baby you the babied her <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i was just like oh wow. gotta chill it's not your turn no more wow <laughs> you gotta crisp brown her to the side sweet mm. she gotta move mm-hmm. 
Okay, well, would you ever have an open marriage? Yeah, like I said, I would. If the woman was right, I would consider it. Mm-hmm. Okay. But she would have to be like, you know, attracted to both me and Keys, or even if she has more relationship with Keys than me, that's cool. You know, as long as everything mm-hmm. is cordial and it's communication. No, I'm aware that at some point you guys were about to close off the open relationship thing. Mm-hmm. So. I kind of just assumed that whenever you thought that you guys were going to move to a different stage in life, mm-hmm. it wasn't going to happen anymore. So right. when you move to marriage, it's still my No, I mean, for marriage, I mean, it might happen depending on if it's someone who we feel like is... It's deserving. Yeah, deserving. but, you know, like if we're, if we're just out on vacation or something, mm. there's somebody we're vibing with the Ooh, whole time, something like swinging? that, it'd be cool. I don't even know about swinging. That's where you draw the line? I don't know. It's just kind of weird, like, when the other person's significant other is there, and it's just like, I don't know. That's oh, no, you know it is? You don't want no nigga in there. Nah, I mean, I'm not really, you know, attracted to dudes, so I wouldn't. Right. You know, I'm not like, yeah, bring a nigga in here, you know? It's just like, it's not what I'm, you know, not ideal, but I mean, I've let my girl do stuff, you know, like, over the course of it. Right. You know? so okay. I'm not, like, unfair with it. Okay, so it's a real open relationship. Now, nah, but y'all, y'all be doing okay? <laughs> So, you have a new song that just dropped tonight. Mm-hmm. Do you want to speak on that? Yep, so the song is called Hall of Fame. It's featuring Mikey Moore from Florida. Shout out to him for getting on the song. Um, it's on all streaming networks. And I probably we're thinking about doing a music video. I'm going to let you know. But um, definitely want the song to do good. And y'all let me know what y'all think. Because, uh, you know, I've been waiting to release it. Definitely a special song to me. So, that's how we're going to start the year off. Let me know how y'all like it. And last question, are you going to have any, I mean, I don't know if you can tell me or not, but are you going to have any features on this next album that I assume is coming? May have an Icy Twat feature, but I'm going to let you know. Icy Twat, if okay. you look him up, he's a big artist in Chicago. So. Yeah, what about me, Bravo? Oh, you already know you. That's inevitable. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the Chelsea Show. I really mm-hmm. appreciate you doing that. No problem and it was all. nice talking to you. The best DMV you artist. Well. We have. Thank you, mama. <laughs> real shit. Yeah. Thank y'all for yeah. 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 I'ma make waves with a water aim. Hit me on my page, yeah, I'm on the way. Never on time, but I'm never late. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the money in drugs.